You are an immunologist who advocates nutritional immunology very strongly. What exactly is nutritional immunology? And what made you think of combining the science of nutrition together with the science of immunology? Well, about 30 years ago, I was merely doing research in universities in the U.S. As an immunologist at that time, most people don't understand my profession. They would ask me, what is an immunologist? And it would take me a lot of time to be able to explain it at that time. Then later on, there comes AIDS, and people start to understand what is the immune system. Basically, every single one of us who we are born into this world, we bring with us one of the best doctors in the world. It is the functioning of our immune system. Our immune system is just like an army protecting a country. So whenever there is an enemy that comes invading into our country, or I should say into our body, then the immune system will come to our defense. So at that time, I was studying immune system, the function of our immune system. And my focus is into cancer research, how we can utilize the functioning of our immune system in the treatment of cancer. So I was studying into different drugs and how they affect cancer and how they affect the immune system. As a young scientist, I was very happy to do the research. As you know, for someone to go into the science field, especially for a girl at that time, you have to have this zest for science. You have to love what you study. I used to study day and night because I thought as a scientist, I would be able to change the world. I dreamed of curing cancer. I dreamed of winning the Nobel Prize. Until one day, that one day, that scene has stayed in my mind all these years. That day, I walked into the hospital. And I remember very well, when I pushed open that door, I saw a very young mother. She was making recordings. And beside her bed, there was about two to three kids playing jumping. And so at that time, I don't know what she was doing because she was talking into a cassette recorder. You know, at that time we used cassette. I do understand the young people over here, you've never seen the existence of a cassette tape before. But at that time, you know, there was this, by her bedside, there were stacks of cassette tapes. And she was just talking into a cassette recorder. And I asked her, I said, so what are you recording? And then at that time, she said these words to me that has always remained in my mind until this very day. She said, pointing to the cassette tapes and saying, I made this recording for my daughter so that she can hear me on her day of marriage. And I made this other tape for my son on the day for his high school graduation. And the kids were so small. At that time, I did not even say goodbye to her. I just pushed open the door and I left. I went to my lap, I banged the door closed and I started to cry. And I started to ask myself, why am I crying? Is it the feeling of guilt? Or why am I crying? And then at that time I realized it is because I don't have a purpose in life anymore. My purpose in life, I study so hard to be a scientist just because I want to give hope. But in my heart, I know that mother over there, she will never live to see her son graduate. I know she will never live to see her daughter married. So at that time, I started to doubt my own research. Yes, many people, my colleagues, they tell me, as a scientist, as 
long as you know the side effect of the different medications, we are improving medicine. They tell me, as long as we are able to improve the medication, then we are doing the world good. But at that time, I asked myself, is that really true? Maybe, maybe that mother really, really doesn't have to get cancer from the very beginning. So I asked myself, as a scientist, what do I study? What is my specialty? What do I teach to college students on a daily basis when I lecture over there? And then I realized I teach nutritional immunology. That's what I lecture, that's what I teach. But yet, I cannot offer hope. So I started to look into prevention. I want to know that the immune system can be strengthened, that we can prevent illnesses from happening from the very start of the illness. But yet, I realized one day, I became a specialist. They call me a PhD. My student addressed me as a doctor. But do you realize one thing? Throughout all my career, I've never taken a course of nutrition. That means I can graduate, I can teach in college, I can lecture, but there is no relationship from nutrition to the immune system. So I went to the nutrition department. Then I realized one thing, you can graduate as a PhD in nutrition, and guess what? You don't have to take a single course of immunology. That means the two sides are completely separate from each other. So at that time, I started to research into the relationship between nutrition to the functioning of our immune system. And I call it nutritional immunology. So in this science, I study into the different type of food on the supermarket, the vegetables, the fruits, and how they affect the functioning of our immune system. So let me give you an example. Many of us, whenever no, we hear of someone getting cancer, we get very scared. And so immediately we will ask for diagnosis. And then the doctor may tell us, ah, oh, the tumor is first stage, or it's in the early stage. And then another instance, people will tell us, oh, it's in the later stage. And then we may have a friend, we may have a relative that gets cancer. And in no time, we're saying sayonara, goodbye. So every single one of us, we have this notion that cancer occurs almost immediately. But the reality is far from that. Let us take a look into it. A tumor cell, when it first appears, it's only one. It has two multiplied from one to two, two to four, four to eight, and so forth. They do not multiply like every half an hour. They don't multiply every hour. So what is happening here is, do you realize that for the first cancer cells that appear, take for example lung cancer, until the time we can detect it in hospitals today. That means the cancer probably has developed at least 10 to 20 years before we can detect it in hospital, which means two-thirds of the history of cancer, the patient and the doctor, we do not know about it. It means someone that gets lung cancer at the age of 50 they probably had it when they were in their early 30. The same goes for colon cancer. The same, you know, for breast cancer. It takes six to eight years before we can detect it. So, what we are fighting for is when the cancer cell is small, when there is only 100 multiplying into 200 cancer cells. 
when there is only 1,000 multiplying into 2,000. And a lot of times for the cancer cells to go from two to four, it's going to take a month. It doesn't occur just overnight. Why? Because you have an immune system. So you have an army trying to say, no, I'm going to stop you from multiplying. So the key would be, by the time when we are able to detect them in the hospital, we're looking at 10 billion cancer cells multiplying into 20 billion. It is a little late. So we are looking at prevention. That means as long as we are able to do education, as long as we eat correctly, as long as we eat more vegetables and less meat, your immune system will function better. When your immune system functions better, probably you'll never know you've got cancer before because you would have destroyed it in no time. After 30 years of research in cancer and also into the functioning of our immune system, one of the most common questions people love to ask me would be, so Dr. Chen, what is the best herb for our immune system? And I would tell them, the very best thing for your immune system is not a particular herb. It is the soup, the vegetables, the fruit in the supermarket. As long as you eat a variety, then it will nourish your immune 